Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Nigerians and friends of Nigerians across the world. We don't come again, the healthcare team. And my name still remains Loretta, Loretta Oduware Obo Oko. Today we are here, Gidigba. We won't come talk to the healthcare policy of Obi Dati team. That means the government after this one when we did so. Where Peter will be another dirty common. Waiting they get in plan, in waiting for those 133 million poor, multi-dimensionally poor Nigerians everywhere for the world. Now, I they hear seven plus TV, they tell us they now 30 minutes they won't give us for this healthcare session. Oh boy, that will not go join at all. Because every single Nigerian patient is worth it. If anybody there collapse now, we need good healthcare structures. Even though we get power, anything where they are so wrong, if we not get good hospital, it never complete. And will be that it, not that one. So with your permission, plus TV, and with the permissions of Nigerians across the world, and with the permissions of friends of Nigerians that wish Nigeria well, we are actually going to take our one hour because. Every single Nigerian patient is worth it. So today, we want to discuss health as a panel. And we have Nigerians from across the board, everywhere in the healthcare sector. Healthcare system is not only doctors. It's not only pharmacists. Here we have pharmacists, doctors, nurses, potters. And today, no less professionals than people like Isaiah Okoje, obstetrician and gynecologist, a BMA representative. We have Sean Sowemi Moore, somebody who is a fantastic bariatric surgeon and holds his own even in the film industry. Have you ever heard of Milkmaid? Go and check it out. Emmanuel Emiatoba is there. Emmanuel is an internal physician with special interest in cardiological health. My dear, anything will concern your heart. Now, this man is supposed to hold. And of course, we have our own Henry King, Henry Okozato, aka the first man who decided that as a doctor, he wants to be a comedian. And the first comedian to officially be a doctor. This man has traversed Nigeria, Worry, TNT, UK, name it. Primary healthcare, potential healthcare, the man did there. Comedio, he did there. And then I have sister and lady H, Henrietta Uku. This is a woman who has spent 30 years in big pharma. A, an internal physician and a public health expert. She's also an author. And of course, the man who has worked day and night with me, the man who tells me that you can't sleep, oh, this thing must happen. Talking to Nigerians everywhere on the globe about healthcare. If I'm Justin Okeke, a pharmacist, an academic, in fact, the man titles are then too many. I cannot, I can go on and the whole day we end, but we don't have that time. And of course, we have the CNS, the man who has decided that after getting all the training in the United Kingdom, he needs to do what we call brain game, reverse brain drain. And he has been in Nigeria now for over six years, a consultant neurosurgeon with endoscopic and complex spine and uh, complex brain skills, putting Nigeria on the map. Then we have our own very special brother, a man who has worked in the community. When you say community, door to door, community health extension worker. And then this man said, no, 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 I will not stop there. He went on to become a nurse. And today he is a period nurse, working with some of the best minds in Nigeria. I want to join me welcoming these people, and then we are going to bring home a case scenarios that we can all relate to it, that will take us through the seven pillars of Obidati's healthcare plan. And I'm going to call on Aizemi Okoji. Oh yeah, Aizemi, you get the floor. Nigerians are waiting for you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. So, Peter Obi campaign always talking on and on about the seven pillars they are going to work on and how human capital development is important. So to streamline that, human capital development is made up of education and health. So from the health side of things, we're going to take a microscopic look to examine what the policy has or holds for us as a nation. 
So we're going to dissect this using case-based scenarios like Dr. Uh, like Loretta. Excuse me. We don't want to be called doctor here because we are all Nigerians. So Loretta said before. So I will be sharing my screen so you can see. I will go straight into the first scenario. The first case scenario is a 54-year-old farmer of Buari origin in the Abuja axis of Nigeria went to the farm about 6 a.m. in the morning to start his substance, subsistence farming for the day. Unfortunately, while on his yam farm, and just as the a long day was ending, he felt a sharp pain and called out to his wife, who had accompanied him to the farm that day. So upon realizing it was a snake bite, the brave woman sought for and was able to kill the snake with her cutlass. She then rushed her husband to the nearest healthcare center as he had started feeling weak and faint. On arrival at the twilight, there was no doctor at the primary health care center. The overnight nurse on duty put an oxygen mask on him and told the wife that, the, uh, that she will inform the doctor about the presence of the patient when he arrived in the morning. The wife, in a bid to adjust the oxygen mask, realized that there was nothing flowing out of it. She pointed this out to the nurse, who took a second look at the cylinder and concluded uh, it had either run out of oxygen or something was wrong with the dispensing mechanism. Doctor and comedian Henry Kodasso. In regarding the healthcare and healthcare capacity and resources pillar, what sort of manpower availability can you speak to in this case scenario? Thank you very much, uh, my dear sister Isaac. Uh, Nigeria is now well done. First of all, I think the first thing they confuse us inside this country. Where is the subsistence? My people, it just simply means say now nah, the thing where the man they also they take the shop every day. As in every day they go also. They got to see now twilight. That twilight, leave twilight. The man they brought the man go hospital. Uh, snake bite for Nigeria. Uh, because say manpower not really day. I don't work as our sister uh, Loretta Tokam. I don't work for primary health care, work for tertiary, I work for data state government, well, I think name of the villages there and the towns that I have for work. I can't still do the uh, residency for UBTH. So the three tiers of government uh, well, of uh, hospital I work for inside. What you they find for most of this kind of case, what you they see most of the time, be say, because a manpower not day. I'm not saying manpower not day alone, no. You go reach that hospital now, you did not get antivenom for the snake. Now I make you they see some of them, those village people, they'll come go they suck, they'll go they suck the, 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 the wound where it is as you're here now snake bite, they don't put pipe, they use their mouth to they suck them. No no you say as they suck that thing, they come on, they suck poison they put for their body too. So to cut big story short, manpower now what cup for Nigeria etc. You know say what cup now be the highest for football. Then Medications, they're not day. That's a Champions League. Okay, so, um, Dr. Comedian, we will talk about those other aspects. So, in other words, manpower is not, a, it's not available. Not day, not day, not day, not day, not day at all. And then they come with policies. The government, they come with plenty, plenty policy. Today, they, today they bamboozle the people and they don't say manpower, not day. Yeah. Exactly. And those policies not day effective. All right. So, Loretta. Do you think this nurse realized the need for urgency in this case? It, it's a good thing we are using a scenario close to home like this. And it's, this is what the Obidati team is trying to do with healthcare and trying to stop. Clearly, you had a staff that did not have capacity. Capacity in terms of skills, capacity in terms of knowledge. That staff did not understand the urgency of snake bite, did not immobilize the leg, and did not even know how to refer. The oxygen wasn't working, and she was saying the next morning, for goodness sake, snake bite person, the person got a thing. You'll get a set till tomorrow. No, this is what we need to stop. And Obi Dati has said that we must improve human capacity and resource for healthcare. Now, we say we know say we not get many doctors enough, eh? But what we will not do, eh? We not think in a Nigerian manner. How will take care of the over two hundred million people where we get? Now, one thing we call 
tax shifting and tax sharing. Now we say we go come begin the pull our losses then to humble people where is serving what that they do. We are going to train them, standardize them, even the traditional bet attendants and the queue. So that when person come there, they'll say, ah, this is urgent, oh, this is what they have to do, and this is how I'm going to refer to the nearest place. This is one of the big pillars out of the seven of the Obidati Manifesto. Speaking to this case in time. Thank you very look, much. Look, not verse eyes there. Make I just shook some more mark too for there. Okay. Look at the doctor say healthcare, healthcare, healthcare. Native doctors and travel medical too. They need to incorporate them. Join with the Loretta don't talk so. So we are yeah. kind of educate people on the yes. basic needs for first aid in this sort of scenario. It's very common in Nigeria. I particularly don't like anything that creeps or crawls. So um, I have a big phobia for snakes. So you can imagine what, if you don't know what to do in that sort of situation, you panic, you are, you are at risk of so many things. And in this particular case, this poor farmer is not only at risk of dying from snake bites, he's at risk of dying from insecurity from the situation in the nation. He's also at risk of dying from the corrupt practices going on and the sharp practices going on in the healthcare industry. So on that note, I'm going to call on Douglas. What can you speak to regarding service delivery in terms of equipment or equipping um, healthcare? Oh, I, I think uh, everybody hear me very well. Yep, you good. Yeah. So I, I, I think the, the key thing we should remember here, from a policy point of view, Obi, that's policy point of view, is that for a very long time. Governments in Nigeria have not interfaced with people. The, the people too, they far from, from government. Mm -hmm. Remember, say, you get this 133 million people when multi, they say multidimensionally poor. And that, that multidimensional poverty means, say, they don't get access to basic basic education, they don't get access to basic health. You get one who won't get big, uh, this is what they, what they call sustainable development goals. If you look look those goals, about 17 of them, they, number three, now actually healthcare. Number four, the education. So healthcare, they're very, very important. One of the things where they're very weak for our healthcare system, now the primary healthcare system, which is the basic healthcare system. So if you look this man now, this man where they, where they work for, for, for farms, so where's, where's the vital? Where he goes so now the primary healthcare system, Across Nigeria, across the one that the seven hundred and seventy-four local governments for Nigeria, they think they're almost non-existent. You go see buildings and stuff. When do they work? Now, what did the OB that the policy they talk? They say they go really invest well, well for two key things. Number one, the service delivery. Service delivery in terms of say, oh, when you actually enter any small place, say my primary healthcare center, they go get everything where they need in terms of. Key thing, like you rightly, like you, like you, like you rightly said, I, I say, the human resource for health. And Loretta, you talk, talk, and talk good for the matter just now. When she talk about, we say, if you look the population of Nigeria, 215 million people, roughly, and so, and you say you want to deliver care to these people, the about 40,000 doctors where they, where they in Nigeria, not there enough at all. Because if they look things like WHO uh, uh, standard, where they say one doctor to 600 patients, you don't go fit. So you now need to you know, use this extra sense. They talk, they talk, okay, how will we, how we come to deliver healthcare to these people? How will they provide service when they talk about I say to these people? So yeah. one of these don't talk about this one lawyers don't talk to say you will look like the lower the, the one particular cadre of healthcare workers. Same say this cadre of healthcare workers, we go pick them up, we'll give them extra training. They will come savvy. Those people that for, for this man who went enter that place, when they bite, so they go feel respond well, well. You go train them in such a way they say they, they will get the capacity, they will get the knowledge, and you go regulate them well, well. Because one of these people they fear, they say, ah, if you put this people, maybe they do some some level where, like say, so they take some 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 work for for doctor. They feel something they misbehave or they misdiagnose people. They do this, but you go check them. You go make sure say what do they call regulation. Say they strong well, well. Will be big or even where they use sometimes robust accountability mechanisms. Okay, to make sure same and say that they ban. Now, so you will take, and I saw the will be dirty government when they come in. Now, so they want to improve the service, especially for that primary healthcare where this farmer goes to. I will stop there for now. Okay, so you can see from the uh, policy document, the action plan for healthcare service delivery in the will be dirty um, um, uh, regime, I would say, will be a focus on primary healthcare. Solid infrastructure investment, i.e., renovation and maintenance. They are not interested in building new fantastic buildings that will crumble in the next, you know, how many years or the next dispensation. And it's pretty because we love pretty things in Nigeria, but we have a very poor maintenance culture. 
And also, yeah, Rebecca, if I feel, if you could permit me just for a few seconds, we can add with it, join it with it, Dr. Douglas. Uh, Douglas, don't talk so. Another thing, when they say it happen for those health, they don't get equipment. If you see primary health care for abroad, if yeah. you read there, to seek or hungry you, to seek or hungry you. Yeah. But if you come our primary health care, equipment not there. And apart from saying the most equipment manage get some equipment, they know they do retraining, they train them again, they, they update them. And I believe say now waiting or be that could do because their experience and the kind of sense where they don't get it, but the leadership it go help Nigeria. Absolutely. That brings me to the hardware procurement side of the policy and workforce optimization. Now I'm going to call on you, um, Shil, and I'm going to ask you a question about um, what's it called now? Um, the use of healthcare information systems in this case scenario. What would be your advice regarding how we can optimize care or make sure we deliver the safest care to these patients and millions of, and thousands of other farmers who are Nigeria's workforce actually and food basket um, um, generators? Okay, thank you very much uh, for bringing me into this scenario. The first thing I wanted to note was that as we were talking about manpower in the first instance, now women get the power inside this story. Because now <laughs> women get power, kill that snake. Hmm. I tell you. Free myself, man. Anyway, we believe that matter. But now women get power, clean, kill that snake, and are not stay the center of this story. Yes. So <laughs> where healthcare information systems and management enter and be say, I see say Obidati have a plan to leverage the resources that we have in the diaspora in terms of doctors, right? Mm -hmm. To use to help our healthcare system in Nigeria. Mm? Even here, where I did for New Jersey, the biggest healthcare uh, information management system that then they use, one third of the workforce are Nigerians. Imagine. We think yeah. that one, right? So mm -hmm. using healthcare information systems, where then fit apply to the basis level, where we say your paka paka cell phone, not be like a fancy one like this, where we get fit operate with them. That nurse can have the information she need to administer first aid to that farmer. Absolutely, absolutely. That nurse can have pictures of the kind venomous snakes, where them be. We be saying she won't even need to be carrying that snake. They carry and go health center. She go get those pictures on top Absolutely. that make make phone to identify, you know, the kind of venom we go day there. Then we leverage be even those health information systems to map out the areas where those snakes then they localize, mm -hmm. so that then go stock the kind of anti venom where they needed for those snakes in those very, very important. systems. Very important. Mm -hmm. Healthcare centers that they there. Be like say you go teeth work from um, Lady H, but I wanted to call Lady H to talk more about vaccine and um, OKK as well. We'll talk more about vaccines and uh, medicines regarding the policy uh, of the Obidati um, campaign. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Loud yeah. and clear. Good. Thank you, uh, SDA yeah. and Loretta and all of the speakers so far. Um, the Obidati campaign and manifesto has seven core pillars in yeah. the health policy, as you know. And um, speaking on the medicines, vaccines section, um, as already mentioned, the anti-venom is critical. And we have many different types based on the different snakes. And most in most instances, we use the polyspecific freeze-dried um, type or mm -hmm. the liquid type which requires refrigeration. So when you think about these two options, we don't even have sustainable or sustained electricity or power for these primary care centers. So in the Obidati campaign and manifesto, equipping and resourcing the medical centers, the primary care centers appropriately is certainly a, a principal aspect of the policy or the healthcare approach and the healthcare campaign. So when we think about this patient, there were some immediate things, immediate steps that needed to have been taken, like immobilizing the joint or the, the section where he uh, sustained the, the snake bite, yeah. lowering it, 
And these all require education, bringing a level of awareness educating, mapping out, as you mentioned earlier, those areas where we have the prevalence of snake bites, river rain areas, Very swampy different. areas, uh, yeah. tropical areas where or the jungles where people work or in the farm and yeah. ensure that their health fairs, educating the, the, the general population there on snakes and how to take immediate care. And yeah. then to the point that has already been made around information technology, how do we get them transported from such interfaces to primary care centers and having those primary care centers appropriately equipped and the nurses trained to know when to escalate and to administer some of the immediate um, therapies that we have available to us. So I think that the, the healthcare policies that are being put forward will actually address many of these from both the leadership and governance, as well as availability of the medicines and equipments needed. So the policy is going to be looking at points of, for action um, um, looking into production, the management and sustain, uh, sustaining the production and also regulating the production so people are not producing fake or um, substandard um, antivenom or other um, products that re um, require production in Nigeria. So that's the NAFTA that has to make sure they are on their uh, ball and they're doing the right thing. Um, go, coming to you, um, okay, uh, if I, I'm just going to stop sharing for a second so we can see you. Um, what are your takes or what else do you want to add to that regarding what um, the DH just said? Have I got Ifai or KK on? Yes, I think he needs to be unmuted. Can we unmute him, please? Okay, good evening. Can you hear me loud and clear? Oh, yes. yes we can now. Okay, great. Good evening, everybody. And uh, I want to uh, thank uh, my sister, Enreta, who has already talked about uh, the anti neck uh, vaccine. Yeah. But I want to add that that concept of from consumption to production is what the team is bringing to the table. Absolutely. I want to inform you that the concept of essential drug is about producing safe, affordable, effective and quality products, drugs in Nigeria. So I want to also give you information that Nigeria was producing vaccines before. Mm -hmm. In Yaba, federal yeah. uh, production, so Yaba here. From, from 1940, absolutely. From 1940 to 1991, we were producing our yellow fever, we were producing our anti rabies vaccine, not just for consumption in Nigeria, but also for distribution to other Af African countries. So what went wrong? So Vidati is saying we are going to produce our vaccines locally. And one of the advantages for that, that man that came in with a bite, do you believe that I have to go to India to get vaccine to give him? What if there is supply chain disruption, like the time we, the type we had during the COVID era? That means the man exactly. will, will die. Exactly. So we need to produce our vaccine locally, and we have the capacity. We be that the team is bringing that to the table, not just uh, anti snake venom, malaria vaccine, vaccine for childhood diseases, the uh, diphtheria, pertussis, uh, tetanus, polio, hemophilus in influenza type B vaccine, and also HPV vaccine. There are so many of them. And what about COVID? The COVID that he is bringing to the table. Look at production of that. I said, I bet if you know, if you know, my yeah, COVID vaccine. Yes, COVID vaccine. Let me tell you, uh, during the COVID time, Nigeria lost the opportunity of benefiting from 1.2 billion euro of EU because we did not have our local capacity. Some of those funds went to Ghana, mm -hmm. Senegal. Even South Africa. South Africa is boasting of about three vaccine companies now producing. Ghana here is women of Senegal. So Nigeria, we are big, but we have to bounce back. Obi Dati has done it before. Uh, Obi has done it in Anambra State. Obi Dati is going to even do more. Absolutely. To make uh, the primary mm -hmm. care, secondary mm -hmm. care work. That's all I have to add for now. Thank you. And Harry, just cutting you, uh, uh, there's something you wanted to say. Yes, uh, not the only uh, vaccine in Nigeria don't produce. Though. There was a time that the Russian president, if I think remember, Yesin Boris, he get heart problem. 
Nigeria give that man heart. I will, I join the team when they go Russia go visit the man. We tell and say make him not go anywhere go take treatment. We say we get heart to give him. We give him heart for Nigeria. Oh, Who you Yeah. Huh? Who you I say who you kill, you collect your heart, so... No, now, nah. immediately we brought him to Nigeria. We first of all, we hospitalized her for Casina State. <laughs> Casina State are the home of hospitality. Mm -hmm. From then, I will kind of go there, that, because that's already the big heart of the state. We can't give her heart for there, but the heart not a beat. So they will kind of... <laughs> <enter her. laughs> and those they can't make the heart they beat. The heart was beating, but it was not working in an excellent condition. Now we can't enter Lagos. Lagos can't make her work in an You know, say, you know, say they carry last. Uh -uh. By the time they finish giving the other the work finish, yes, in Boris and the team, we are very happy. They say, okay, we are the one shop. Now we can't go Benway State, the, the food basket of the nation. They eat finish, they say they want back. We can't enter Kogi State, the complex state where two rivers for me. Now, so they jump at the river, bath. When they finish, they say, okay, we are the one sleep. We say, Anabra State Day, home for all. From there, they can't say they got hard. By the next morning, when they wake up, they shook up for pocket. They say they don't get money. We say they don't worry. Nigeria has get money. Nigeria is blessed. We carry the entire river state, the treasure base of the nation. The like, yes, in Boris and the team, we give them money finish. They say they won't go. But you just yes, Boris say no. Say we must do something for all Nigerians. But this happened, we give them so. Say, but we go for do party for us. Now we say, no, no worry now. We get sent out unity for Abuja. He could gather everybody. The man was so pleased. As he was going, say we won't pass go. Now we take and go Ogun State, the gateway state. Now they pass grass. So that past glory when we get. Oh, be that him will bring a comeback. Absolutely. That him will bring a comeback. That's ourselves. Absolutely. We do plenty of things. And you know, it's not just that. There's also a national pride because even those of us in diaspora, when you see the way people are mistreated, even professionals are mistreated and treated like they're just common migrants, it's very heartbreaking. And you know, you just think if my nation was stable, this wouldn't be happening, you know. I mean, they can't treat a man from Switzerland that way or someone from Sweden that way who's working in the UK, for example. There's a degree of respect. So we need to get our national pride back. So I'm just going to give you sure. some fun facts before um, we go on to the next scenario, which we will discuss quite rapidly. So WHO recommends that um, for managing snake bites, it's, an, it's, it's a category of um, care which is regarded as neglected in the public health sector and they want to aim to drop the incidence by 50 percent because so far about 81,000 to 140,000 people die globally and in Nigeria setting it's about 500 people per 100,000 so that's like one in 200 people um, suffering from snake bites in, in Nigeria and those who suffer morbidity as in suffer long-term consequences including post-traumatic stress disorder about another 400,000 so it's actually quite important and like um, Lady H had mentioned about immobilizing so you put pressure immobilize rush the person give first aid on the site by immobilizing and putting pressure take the person to the urgent care center or um, treatment center and uh, uh, can I, can I just add something to, to that, um, uh, Isaiah? And I think another key thing is that if you, if you look at the incidence of snake bites, it's actually around the food basket of Nigeria. It's actually in the savannah region yes. of Nigeria. So that's really, really important because one of the key things that you'll be that is, is looking at is really pushing agriculture. So that's what it's really important that we actually look 